Hey everybody, CVH here, and today we're continuing our Heroes of Skyrim set review with the Endurance card. So let's get right into things with Dragon Cult Ghost. And again, if you want to check out the other parts, they're all up on the channel, so feel free to give them a view. But Dragon Cult Ghost, a very interesting card to start with, spending all your available magicka to summon it, and its power and health are equal to the magicka spent. So 1 cost 1-1 one, one, or 2 cost 2-2. Two, two. It's got to really be the last thing you play during a turn, because after you summon it, it's not going to leave you with any magicka to use elsewhere. On the whole, I'm against this card from a playability standpoint, because you're not really getting anything spectacular stat-wise for your magicka. Yeah, you could play it for basically any size, uh, but anything from a 5 cost 5-5 five, five, to a 1 cost 1-1 one, one, to a 3 cost 3-3 three, three is a little underwhelming in ranked. Now, one, uh, one note to make about this card, I'm kind of glad I've waited on the Endurance review, for uh, this many days because today I was playing and it actually came up and constructed on the ladder and someone played it on me and it turns out you can't silence this card I thought it would be silenceable apparently according to one of the devs uh, Matt Nass said they had tested it silenceable but they wound up going with it the way it is currently which is that it cannot be silenced that said even when you're getting a big dragon cult ghost there are ample answers removal, piercing javelin, shackling it. Silence is just one of many things that would have been able to answer it, which can't answer it now, but I just don't think this card is of the power level you'd want to construct despite its versatility. In Arena, this card could be the giant threat you need to close out the game. This could just be, you know, top decking at the end of an Arena game. Here comes my 12-12 Dragon Cult Ghost. So in that format, I think it's much better. Encumbered Explorer, I talked about in the first impressions video, the similarity of this card to Zombie Chow, and I still really, a lot of the things I said in that first impressions video are, are still my opinions of the card. That said, I still don't exactly know where this card fits in in a constructed deck. I love the design of this card, a 1 cost 2-3 that like basically takes over a lane very early, allows you to defensively trade, uh, and just makes your opponent not comfortable playing their goblins, Skulks, and Daring Cut Purse against it at all, because this card is going to come out really, really quickly, of course, because it's a 1-drop. Uh, I haven't really tested it in many slow decks yet. I don't think it's going to make a huge splash, because again, the whole point of the two-lane system in this game is that if you have the biggest thing in a lane, it's not the end of the world. You can just move to the other lane. Uh, but a good card, definitely a good card that I expect we'll see someone take advantage of in a slower deck sooner or later. Solid card in my opinion. I like the design. Ancient Lookout, got some dragon support. When you summon one, it summons a 1-1 one, one Draugr Sentry with guard. 2 cost, 2-3, two, already not the worst, and the 1-1 one, one guard uh, can potentially be very powerful and or annoying depending on what kind of deck you're playing against. Really good against those aggro decks because you're playing a, a slow dragon deck presumably, so getting this thing out there to trade early, pretty powerful, and the 1-1 one, one, a very useful effect as well, giving it guard so it can block your opponent's attacks and uh, trade with some of their weaker dudes. So a really powerful early game tool for endurance using dragon decks against aggression. The issue will just become whether or not there are enough of those slow endurance using dragon decks. People have already tried some dragon scout decks. Um, I've tried the, a, a ramp scout more akin to the older ramp scouts, not necessarily focusing on the dragons that I have liked. I'm not sure how much of a focus we're going to see on the dragons and endurance, but I firmly expect that if there are dragon decks uh, using endurance that play a lot of those late game dragons, you will want three of this card in them. So this is the first card we're going to talk about that I'm really excited about and constructed. Soul Tear. Uh, shout, I should show you all the levels I guess. Level 1 draws a creature from your discard, level 2 does the same thing, gives it plus 2 plus 2, and level 3 gives it plus 5 plus 5. Wow, the graveyard interactions in this set are pretty insane. I was playing Ram Scout earlier today on the ladder, as a matter of fact, to prep myself for this review video. Not really, I just wanted to test the deck. Uh, this card is serious business. Serious value in the late game. Uh, and even reasonable in the early game to get back one of your early guards if you just need some more defense or some removal, like a Territorial Viper or a Leaf Lurker. Um, you could use this in other combinations of colors, obviously, not just Scout necessarily. Uh, but in a deck like Scout, you can get back those super big value generators like Blood Magic Lord and Eclipse Baroness late in the game. And this card also buffs them, which is pretty insane. But you don't really care too much in a control deck about the size of your guys, but it is just that much more value you're putting on the board. And you just have to pay two Magicka to play this card. Uh, and, and the fact that you're just getting that much versatility in the late stages of the game, you don't have to put an additional potentially dead value-oriented card in your deck, you can just put Soul Tear in your deck and have your choice of all the cards that you've played and that have been discarded up till that point. Of course, you don't even have to play the card, it could just be anything in your discard that got there through yourself milling them with Scout's Report or, you know, what have you, right? So next is Steelheart Vanquisher, some Orc Support. 2 cost 2-2 two, two with Slay, give friendly Orcs plus 1, plus 1. Man, I love Orcs. 
I am not super sold on this card just because it's a slay effect and you're playing a 2 cost 2-2. Two -two. The 2 drop slot already has a lot of good options for orcs and in general, especially like, even if you're not going to play an orc in that slot, you could play Windkeep Spell Sword and I would rather have the war than the slay effect. I really like orcs and I'd like to put as many in as possible into my orc deck, uh, but they are very red leaning currently into strength so they can play Mighty Ally and the other orc we talked about when we were discussing the orcs, the one that draws you a card. Uh, I don't know if this necessarily has a, a place in that deck just because the stats are just that poor. Uh, I'm sure you could build a more well-rounded, um, you know, colored deck with many endurance cards and strength cards, and then this would make a little bit more sense that you're not ruining your mighty ally proc rate. Uh, but even then, the effect of this card just isn't incredibly powerful or that likely at all to really go off, so I'm not really feeling the Vanquisher, to be perfectly honest. But in Arena, if you're picking all the orcs in a warrior draft, sure, perfectly reasonable. Companion Harbinger, 3 cost, 3, 3, beast form, give friendly werewolves plus 1, plus 1, and of course when it enters beast form, it'll be a werewolf itself, so it will be a 4-4 four four after it enters beast form. Uh, a solid card, honestly, if we're going to see any sort of werewolf archetype work, which, uh, you know, it's very, very early into the set's release, so I'm not totally sure what the future of werewolves will be, um, I'm assuming more will be released over time, but if a deck revolving around werewolves and the beast form in general is going to work. I think this is the kind of card it needs. Uh, it's pretty easy to get your beast form effects uh, if you haven't already figured that out by through through playing the cards. It's very easy to destroy one of your opponent's runes through an attack. Just drop this down, uh, get the effect off. The issue is, is the effect powerful enough? And I think the effect is, I just don't know if we have a strong enough pool of werewolves so far to, to really make this worth it. But I think as time goes on, this will be one of the cards that eventually gets to a higher power level. I like the, uh, I like the design though for werewolves, definitely something they need. Next up is East Empire Crafter. 3 cost 2, 4. When you summon another creature with 5 health or more, give it plus 1, plus 1, and guard. This card seems pretty powerful in Arena. In Constructed, I don't think anything really needs it. It's just competing for your 3-drop slot and not doing virtually anything by itself. But hey, if we judge it as an Arena playable card, which I think we should, uh, the buff is not insignificant, and the guard is not insignificant, because a lot of those games turn into races. So it can make your threatening cards even more threatening and annoying for your opponent, and this card itself would demand something of an immediate answer. So yeah, I like it in Arena, and in Constructed it's just a bit too inconsistent for my tastes. Next up we have Grim Shield Brother, uh, another 3 cost 2, 3 beast form, plus 1, plus 1, and drain, so it'll be a 3, 4 with drain once it enters beast form. Another relatively okay werewolf synergy card, it's just something you probably play in those decks and I don't think you'd really touch outside of those decks, uh, just because if you don't happen to be getting a beast form right away, the 3 drop 2, 3 is just pretty horrible for any sort of constructive situation I can think of. 3-drop, uh, 3-4th three three drain, it's better, it's still not amazing, uh, but if you're getting those werewolf support cards like the Harbinger we just talked about, yeah, it could be more reasonable in that deck. Moving on though to Innkeeper Delphine, a more interesting card I think, 3 cost 2-3 again, but after you play a Dragon or a Shout, either one, Innkeeper Delphine changes into Grandmaster Delphine, which is a 5-5 five five that can't be damaged or targeted by enemy dragons. I don't think the can't be damaged or targeted by enemy dragons is too crazy of an effect. Um, it, it is worth noting that, that means they can't be actually attacked by enemy dragons. It just can't be damaged by enemy dragons, which is pretty insane. Um, that said, the 3 drop 5-5 five five is pretty good. It's just a matter of how often are you really getting this card off. I haven't seen this card included yet. Uh, even in the dragon-centric scout decks that I've noticed, just because, again, if you're not getting the effect soonish, the 3-drop 2-3 three is really, really punishing when your opponent's playing cards like Young Mammoth, or they're just going to control the game and remove this very easily. So you need to get it off really, really quickly, and um, it's just kind of difficult to, to say you're going to do that enough to warrant the slot. I think this card is fine. I think the Grandmaster Delphine is obviously powerful for a 3-cost. The issue is that if you don't get the Grandmaster very quickly, the card loses a lot of power level. Mentor of the Watch is next, another... They're, they're trying to push guards, really, in Endurance. I think I talked about this a little bit in Willpower, too. A Prophecy Guard with Summon. Give a creature in your hand guard. Uh, three cost, two, two Prophecy Guard. Much worse than uh, Midnight Snack, which we'll talk about in the Neutrals, which is a two cost, two, two Prophecy Guard. And the Summon effect of giving a creature in your hand guard. Now, there's some cute things you could do with this. There are some cards that could really use a guard. You could give something with Ward in your hand guard, for example, or something with Lethal in your hand guard. And you can do some interesting things there. Uh, but it's just by itself not a powerful enough play for Constructed, I think, despite being a Prophecy. And I like to give Prophecies a bit of leeway because they're just that powerful. 
when you get those cards for free. Um, but this card is so lackluster when you're not getting it for free, and even not all the time stand out when you are getting it for free. Uh, in Arena, I, I would see myself taking it more. The effect could be much more useful. You could play some uh, really interesting combos that aren't easily answered by Silence or Piercing Javelin. Uh, but in Constructed, not really feeling the power level as too high. Corrupted Shade is a weird one. 4 cost 5-5 five, five with Ward. At the end of your turn, if Corrupted Shade does not have a Ward, sacrifice it. So you play this card, uh, your opponent plays something, you take a really favorable trade with your 5-5 five, five with Ward, and then Corrupted Shade dies. Or you can reward it. You have to be able to reward it, or you can just use this as a 4 cost 5-5 five, five that's going directly to their face. Uh, and then you're not trading, so you're not losing their Ward, but your opponent can then, of course, trade off the Ward, and if you don't reward it immediately, it dies. There are some good 4-drops out there uh, that I think compete pretty hard with Corrupted Shade. You could make the case that a lot of your 4-drops that you play on 4 are going to die in 2 turns anyway, so what's the real difference? Corrupted Shade also can help you curve into High King Emmerich. It's a 4-cost ward that you can then ring into Emmerich afterwards. Uh, I'm On first glance, I'm not really... Because you can't really silence these, this effect off either. It doesn't have silence synergy. If you silence the ward off, then yeah, it's not going to die, but it still doesn't really have a ward, so it's not that great of a combo just for a 4-cost 5-5. I think this card is a bit inconsistent, a bit inconsistent and constructed again, and this is something I've said about a lot of the endurance cards we've talked about. Uh, but yeah, based on the fours we already have in the game, I'm just not really expecting this card to make too big of an impact in constructed. In arena, yeah, it's it's fine, it's fine. It should get enough value before it sacrifices itself inevitably. Even though in arena it'll do that more often because you don't have enough ways to reward it usually. Dragon plate armor plus two plus two. So already we have to look at this and say, wow. 4 cost item with steel scimitar stats. Not loving it. Summon plus 2 plus 2 if you have a dragon in your discard pile. So, best case scenario, uh, it is almost as good as Dawnbreaker. That's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, it is a steel scimitar that costs 4 times as much as it should. Uh, would I play this in Arena if I had to pick it? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a buff effect and you can't really take those for granted. It could still be impactful despite being tremendously overcosted or inconsistent or both. Uh, and constructed, nope. Not touching it. I think that's really all I need to talk about. Emperor Titus Mead the second. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. 4 cost 1 4. Again, our initial glance at this card, its stats are just horrendous. At the end of your turn, give the top creature of your deck plus 1 plus 1 in guard. Well, at least we know this effect is always going to go off because it's going to survive until the end of my own turn for sure if I'm playing it on my turn. So essentially, it has it's a 4 cost 2 5 of value since you are giving something plus 1 plus 1 in guard. The effect, however, is incredibly inconsistent, and this card is a huge tempo loss on 4. Just a 4 cost 1 4. That's Merchant's Camel, except uh, I think the benefit of a Merchant's Camel is just strictly higher than giving a random card in my deck, plus one, plus one in guard. I mean, it's not really a random card. I always know I'm going to draw that creature before I draw other creatures, but who knows if I want guard on that. You know, plus one, plus one is objectively fine, but you're going to need to give me more stats than that, Titus, because you four cost one four. Not really feeling the card at all. Maybe one of the worst legendaries in the expansion. All right, another four cost with one attack. I don't know what Endurance is doing to me, this expansion. I thought you were the, the, the color of good stats. Uh, troll. Obviously, it's a troll. 4 cost 1, 6 with Regenerate. So Regenerate, that's cool, right? And when Frost Troll takes damage, it gains that much power. Again, weak to Silence, weak to Murkwater, which weak to Curse. Regenerate is good. It doesn't get Lightning Bolted, but it still gets Piercing Javelin, Executed. Um, all kinds of things happen to this card. If it gets silenced, you're just feeling really bad about yourself. Uh, and there are just more consistent 4-drops. I'm not trying to tell you guys that cards like this could never be good and constructed. I just don't think they can compete with the consistency of a card like Preserver of the Root or Royal Sage or virtually any other 4-drop. Even Little Girl is probably more consistent. At least it has a higher ceiling of potential value to you if you can actually stick it. Whereas this also requires time. It doesn't just require it living, it requires some time to really get the max value of the, the power gain effect. In Arena, I think this card could be potentially quite strong, because Regenerate is objectively more powerful in Arena due to the lack of those hard removal actions, the lack of those uh, silence effects as well. You know, even cards like Execute are less common in Arena than they would be in your average willpower deck on the ladder. Regenerate can be quite annoying, and uh, this is likely to stick for enough turns to where you can actually get value from it, and by value I mean attack value. Hi Hrothgar, uh, 4 cost support ongoing, when you summon a creature its power becomes equal to its health, so kind of the Ring of Imaginary Might effect, it's not making the health any higher, 
but it is uh, benefiting those high health creatures like Lurking Mummy all of a sudden becomes a 5 cost Prophecy 6-6 six, six card. So this card is definitely sweet in a very specific style of deck. If you're going to play a, a gimmicky deck based around high health cards and Ring of Imaginary Mites and stuff like that and ways to buff their health, then sure, high health card fits right in. You don't really need the ring. All of a sudden everything just gets its health value as an attack and that can not really function as the win condition by itself but in conjunction with the rings help you out a lot in any sort of existing constructed deck whose plan is to control or just push aggression again this card is just not very impactful it's a four cost support already and yeah i mean like even compared to mundestone the average deck is not going to get enough value out of this for it to be worth it but the right deck could get a lot of value out of this so it's definitely a card that you're going to play if you have a very specific game plan in mind. Lay down arms, set a creature's power and health to one. I mean, objectively, I like the idea of this card design. I think it's really cool card design. I just don't think you ever play this card over a card like Mummify if you want that kind of effect, because not only is Mummify setting basically setting the creature's power and health to 2-2, two -two, it's also essentially silencing it. It's also getting rid of last gasp effects, so it's an essential it's essentially a removal action all in itself. You don't really if you don't need to kill the 1-1 one -one or the 2-2, two -two, then Mummify is always better. And it's also costing a little bit less, and it's a prophecy, so I think this is one of those cards that could be very powerful in Arena again because it functions as decent removal. I can trade into my 1-1 one -one, I can trade into your 1-1 one -one Swamp Leviathan, but not your 8-8 Swamp Leviathan type of deal. Uh, but in Constructed, it's just outclassed by Mummify, so sort of reverse power creep situation there, in my opinion. Um, that said, this also, I mean, I just can't really justify it, right? Like, yeah, you could say, yeah, it sets the, the, power to, the power in addition to the health to 1, so you can set up for Execute. But you can already do that with Mummify if you really want to just execute the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, not a fan of laydown arms in Constructed, but in Arena, it's another cool removal action. And, you know, those are just good. Restoration Tutor, 4 cost, 3, 4, heals a creature on summon. Again, I don't want to talk about this card too much because it should go without saying that a 4 cost, 3, 4 is not very good and constructed. Maybe in the deck we just talked about with High Hrothgar and the Ring of Imaginary Might, you have enough health to really get value out of this. But again, I'm seeing basically an arena card in front of me. Moving on to what I'm pretty sure is yet another arena card, Cave Bear. I don't want to sound like I hate this expansion or anything, it's just Endurance got a lot of cards that are really kind of lackluster and constructed, but really powerful in Arena. Cave Bear is amazing in Arena, it's a 5 cost 5-6, five, that's bigger than Tusk Bristleback, which was already okay. It's practically a purple blood dragon, without any sort of effect. It's a fine card in Arena, I anticipate taking this card a good bit. <clears throat> I have nothing wrong with it, and you're going to see these kinds of cards a lot because it is a common. So you know, in arena, this card is great. Will be impactful. Will benefit your const will will benefit your endurance arena decks uh, because the turn five can be weak in a lot of them. And here's a common that fixes that completely. In constructed, it's just a five cost vanilla. So we're probably not going to be playing the card too much. It just doesn't do anything really fantastic for you. So moving on to white run protector. Uh, a 5 cost 4-4 four, four with beast form, plus 2, plus 2, guard and regenerate. In the context of these werewolf decks, if you're playing cards that buff werewolves, it's good because it's another one of those. It's a beast form, so it will turn into a werewolf. Comparing it to Preserver of the Root, though, in other decks, if you play it on 5 and can get the beast form immediately, it is a 5 cost 6-6 six, six with guard and regenerate. So a little bit better than Preserve of the Root because it costs 1 less and has regenerate, which can be pretty good on a high health guard such as this. Any other time though, it is not that card. It's going to still be more expensive, it's going to require you to attack, so in the majority of decks, Preserver of the Root is going to be better even though you have to wait until turn 7 to get the value from it. And if you want the guard immediately, there are cheaper guards that you can play on like turns 4 and 5 uh, that don't require you to break your opponent's runes, which is not really the thing you want to be doing if you're an aggressive deck. Or if, you, if you're playing a guard, chances are you don't want to be breaking your opponent's runes and giving them those cards, so it's kind of an odd card in that. You're, you're destroying one of your opponent's runes and getting aggressive so you can get a giant guard. Kind of a weird card, expect it to be really good in Arena because it's pretty good stats if you can attack, and Arena decks care less about being purely defensive. So good in Arena, again, not great and constructed in my opinion. Spine of Elder's Blood, just a good card for a very specific deck. I think this, you know, if you're playing Ramp Dragon Scout, this card is, it's a ramp card, it's a dragon card, and you can play it in Scout, so... Hell, it fits your entire game plan, you might as well play it. 6 drops, 6-6 six, six by itself, 
Um, I, I tested a traditional Ram Scout deck without this card because if I don't have the Dragon support, uh, such as the uh, the three cost three four and then agility which is escaping me right now but the really good card that gains you four health and uh, the two drop we talked about in this color already if you don't have those support cards I don't think you really need the additional ramp and the the vanilla body for lack of a better word doesn't really do much besides ramp and sit there looking big uh, besides the dragon support I don't think this card is too insane for a ramp deck uh, but in a dragon ramp deck this card is exactly the kind of thing that would encourage you to play something like that just a good card uh, definitely fine in a as well, uh, but I don't know if I would play it in every single ramp deck just because it says ramp on it, if that's what I mean. Uh, six cost five seven Stonehill Mammoth Summon Draw card if you have two other endurance creatures. Uh, in Arena, this card has decent stats, somewhat. It's not amazing, but it's okay enough, and you might get the card draw. In Constructed, I think there are better ways to get value out of your six plus cost cards. I don't expect this card to see too much play due to the simple fact that even if you get the value out of the card draw summon ability, A6 cost 5-7 is pretty bad and easily answerable. All that stuff, just better value oriented cards. Uh, moving on to Iron Scale Dragon, 7 drop 7-7 seven, seven with Regenerate. It's a vanilla and constructor that gets wrecked by everything. In Arena, it's a big vanilla that doesn't get wrecked by as much and has regenerates. So this card could be pretty annoying. Uh, I think I'd rather have the stats of the 8-8 Swamp Leviathan because it trades favorably with cards like this. But in Arena, yeah, it's pretty good and it's a common. So again, Endurance getting some Arena boosting, but nothing usable and constructed, I'm pretty sure. I've seen some Dragon decks already and none of them have played Iron Scale Dragon. Maybe as a budget replacement, budget Dragon decks maybe incoming. Who knows? Moving on to Frost Giant. 8 cost 10, 10. When a creature heals, you gain that much health. So you're gaining some health. Uh, you're playing this big, dumb 8 cost 10, 10 with Regenerate, which looks like it's you know pretty hard to kill, but in reality and Constructed, it's not. And even if you don't kill it, it doesn't have Guard, doesn't have some crazy effect that you need to get rid of. It'll just be Shackled. In Arena, it's even bigger than the last card we talked about. So, you know, definitely like it. It has Regenerate, too, with pretty reasonable effect because Regenerate's better in Arena. It goes off more often. And more regenerate cards are playable, but yeah, and constructed again, not really feeling this card. So here's one that I wasn't feeling in my first impressions video, but I'm feeling it a bit more now. Skeletal Dragon. It buffs all the cards in your discard pile by plus two plus two, and the last gasp draws another random creature from your discard pile. I wasn't sold about those late game dragon ramp scout decks, and this card has sort of changed my mind. Uh the eight cost five five. Again, it's not good stats. It's like Eclipse Barrenness, and I don't know how many of those I'd ever want to play. Uh, but I used them both in the Ram Scout deck I was playing, and the fact that this has Guard actually does matter quite a bit. If you reduce this with Thieves Guild Recruit, it's amazing. And one important thing to note is when I didn't, when I saw this card for the first time for the first Impressions video, uh, we didn't yet have Soul Tear. So the combination of those two cards can turn your discard pile into a serious resource moving into those late turns when you're just trying to outvalue your opponent in that late game strategy. Like this card a good bit in that specific deck. Uh, in the average aggressive deck, obviously, you don't touch this card or go anywhere near it. In Arena, it's it's good and constructed. It's good in Arena too. It's just sort of big, sort of annoying, and has a really valuable effect. Uh, but in, in Ram Scout, with Dragons, I like this card a good bit. I'm excited to test it more and see if it lives up to the hype. And the last card we're going to talk about is Waves of the Fallen, which transforms all enemy creatures in a lane into 2-2 two, two Draugrs, or transforms all friendly creatures in a lane into 5-5 five, five Hulking Draugrs. Not a huge fan of this card. It does act as a super mummify. If, you're, if your deck wanted mummify, it probably still doesn't want Waves of the Fallen, though, because it costs so much more and it's unclear whether or not it's always going to be better. You can't really force your opponent to pack a lane full of really powerful things that you want to transform. Is it good as a buff for your small guys? I mean, imagine following up an Imperial Reinforcements with this. It's pretty good, but how often is that really going to happen? I think it's just a less powerful buff in general than cards like Divine Fervor. Uh, yeah, it has versatility, um, so I might be underrating this card in a token spell sword with a slightly longer game plan, uh, but I really don't think this card is too fantastic. In Arena, you could maybe play it, because, you know, you're probably going to have a lot of things that are weaker than 5-5, five, five, so if you can buff them all at once, it's more powerful. Uh, the stat modifications could be good in Arena, but in Constructed, not sold on this card. It could surprise me, but it's looking a bit lackluster to me today. But those are my initial thoughts on the Endurance cards of Heroes of Skyrim. As always, if you've enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Check out the other parts of my set review here, and be sure to leave a comment if you think I've underrated or overrated any of these. Join the conversation and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this new set just a couple days into the expansion. And uh, feel free to follow my stream as well in the description, and I'll see you guys next time.